I don't know about you, but I was there minding my own business, doing my thing, and then at some at some point Dark Nova exploded. Like I blink and everybody's talking about this game. Board Game Geek is on fuego with it. It is in the top 20 of Board Game Geek. So I, I wanted to try this game. My friend the local game store didn't have it, so I ordered a copy online and after I received it, I finally played it. So Ark Nova, this is a game where you're gonna create a zoo. The box says the game is for one to four players, so you're thinking, oh cool, you're a game with a solitaire option. It is it isn't so. This is a solitaire game with the option of playing it uh, with multiple people around the table playing at the same time. This is a solitaire game, period. As, as you will see from, from my description, and also I will elaborate on that idea more in the conclusions. So, we're gonna build a zoo in a demanding, advanced, pretty heavy Euro game. There's no doubt about it. Luckily enough, I can give you a sense of the general idea, pretty simple, but it is when you actually play, so you actually need to know what each game effect really does, and then you need to know how to use them to get where you wanna go, that that is when the game becomes demanding. Anyway, each player is gonna have a player area, a player A, that's not the right word, a, a board such as this one, uh, representing the map of where they're gonna build the zoo. There are different configurations uh, from a beginner's map to more advanced map, so you're gonna have variety there. You're gonna have cubes here representing advantages that you gain when you unlock one of these cubes and you unlock the corresponding advantage indicated there. We have the map of the zoo, definitely there is an element of tile laying here because during the game you will spend resources to build enclosures and you start with an enclosure and a building. When you build an enclosure, you will cover some areas and you will receive the bonus of those yellow icons that you cover. You cannot build over rock or water, but several enclosures will need to be next to water and or rock for certain things to be possible. When you build an enclosure, it has the number side phase up. It means that the enclosure is ready, but still uninhabited. When animals move in, that then you flip the enclosure, and now that marks that that is, is being is being used and so that's pretty much the general idea. Certain areas are not available at the beginning, you will need to upgrade your build action to do so, to build over those areas. And that's a key concept in the game, you have five actions that you can take and they come in two flavors, regular and, and upgraded. There is also a worker placement element in that you start with one worker that, and you can spend an action, the action uh, is called the association, then you will send the worker to an area whoop, here on the association board and so you will place your worker on one of these actions to trigger the corresponding effect and as you're probably surmised you start with one, but there are ways of unlocking more association workers. As the game progresses, these tokens represent money, and that's uh, and that's the thing. Uh, you will receive two cards uh, representing uh, unique scoring things uh, that you try to score. This icon means that you score it later in the game, uh, usually at the end of the game. And then we have the real core of the game that uh, is that revolves around these five action cards and these five slots. At the beginning of the game, you place your animals card here in the slot number one, and the other ones are placed randomly. The core idea, as I said, is pretty simple. That is, during your turn, you will take one action. You select one of these cards, suppose that I select build, the, the position of the car will tell me the strength, the higher the better. So if I take the build action right now, I'm taking a build action strength 3. If I take sponsor, it is, it is strength 4. You take the action, you want to move it down a little bit to mark the action you're using. I resolve the action, after that I slide it all the way down and I move the other 
cards accordingly. So now my build action is of strength one and, oh, and some of my other actions have become stronger. So that's the general cycle, the general idea. During the game you will want to cover icons looking like that uh, with that Roman number two there because that is when if I cover that icon that is when I get to upgrade my cards all of the action cards that you saw are double-sided and simply on the other side they have a more powerful version of the action and or in any case an action that um, that 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 lifts some limitations for example with a better build I can now build there with better animal cards I can play some animals that I wouldn't be able to play otherwise you will never be able to upgrade all of your five actions so that that's good and the game really revolves around that idea of you'll never be able to do all that you want that's the idea and that's good in my opinion we have a main board that you're gonna place in the middle of the play area with that deck of cards man I just wish I just wish there were more cards when I see a deck this thing I'm like they were really skimping kidding friends I don't think I've seen a single deck this thick in a long time if ever so of course shuffling is gonna be quite a challenge especially for somebody who's not good at shuffling like me if you're sitting where I am you don't even see the break token that goes there that when I started the game I was like oh gosh the head of a monkey who lost an ear so sad nope it's a coffee cup and this is the break token during the game uh, certain actions will move down the break token when it reaches the end of that track that triggers an upkeep phase in which certain resources will be replenished in which you will get to collect income so after a while doing around people running out of stuff and so they will start taking actions that will uh will move the break token closer to the end of the round and you perform all of those phases there there are a lot of icons if you love icons you are in luck but once you learn what the icons are then they really are effective reminders of the many game functions so that's for the break for the break track then we have the appeal track uh, indicating tickets that you are selling as your appeal increases this goes up then here we have we have another track with actions that are more complicated to take and they will move this other this other marker in this other direction as you can see there when your marker moves on this green track here and it reaches these areas then you'll be able to get special uh, bonuses that as you can see from the tiles will change from game to game and the end of the game is triggered when these two markers the one on the appeal track and the one on this other track either they meet at the end of a player's turn or they uh, or they cross like so like so booyah when that happens uh, that triggers the end of the multiplayer game at that point there will be game effects uh, hope that will hopefully move these markers even more and at that point everybody scores and your score is the difference between the two so to score any positive point you need the marker to have passed the appeal marker otherwise it's negative points and that doesn't that's not good enough to be uh, in the run to win the game. We also have another track here representing knowledge with the little funny square hat. And then this is associated with several game functions and especially with these cards here that are an important resource in the game. The position of your knowledge marker tells you your range. So when I'm taking the action of collecting cards from the center, they need to be within my my range so the more that moves the more options I get plus I get other abilities such as upgrading a card and locking an association worker and these cards represent animals they represent sponsors they represent different ways of 
of scoring. The animals, I know you wanna know about them. Uh, in the top left section of an animal card, it tells you the requirements to play that card. For example, this one, the Eurasian Lynx, uh, requires uh, an enclosure of at least three spaces. And I have one. I have an empty enclosure of at least three spaces. I need to spend $11. And I need to have two Europe icons on my board. Right now, I don't have that. So I need to figure out something different. So this is for the cost. These are the icons that the animal provides. And these are the benefits such as, any, uh, such as moving on the appeal track. So, for example, or I could play this one instead. If I meet all the requirements, I require an enclosure at least one. If I have built a special building, which is the reptile house, then actually it can go in there without taking up any space in it. So I could choose to place in a regular enclosure of at least one or a reptile house. Regular enclosure of at least one needs to be adjacent to water. I only spend four, but once that goes in my zoo, I suppose that I had a little teeny tiny enclosure there and I use it for bloop, that way. Then this goes in my zoo, that means after I flip the enclosure, I place it in my play area, and now that provides me an icon that could go towards that. So that's how you, uh, you collect icons from simple tasks, so to speak, to be able to then play and collect better animals. So that's the general idea of how you play a card. You need to be able to pay for it, uh, you need to have the right enclosures, and you need to have possibly a combination of icons. Other cards are called, are called sponsors. Uh, you, you play them by uh, using the sponsors action. Uh, there is a required strength, remember that. And then simply you have a reminder of what they do. They also produce icons and they usually give you other advantages such as the one that you see there. So, it's not so bad, is it? Again, the general idea is is pretty um, is pretty simple. More in detail in the actions. Again, the build action uh, you will simply build, as the name says. With the upgraded action, you're able to build advanced buildings such as the aviary and or the reptile house. Animals simply allows you to play animals from your hand and or within the reputation range. I guess those knowledge, not reputation, the reputation range, but with an additional cost. If it's upgraded, otherwise you just play from hand. Association, again, that's the worker placement element. Uh, and you allow to, to perform an association task with that value. And again, you can pause and read this one in case you want more detail of the on the upgraded version but again generally the association lets you take your workers and place them here and by doing so you could gain more reputation you can take one of these tokens so that again will give you different advantages these are the tokens again different advantages and they produce those icons for you you can take that action, pretty expensive, but you can take that action and that allows you to place these cubes from this area on one of these conservation projects uh, if you meet the requirements. So for example, if I have two Africa icons and I'm taking that action, I can take one of these cubes and place it there, which gives me two conservation points. So that is the green track. Uh, or I wait until I have four, and so that's good, it gives me more conservation. So that's, and these uh, conservation projects, you have some basic ones that are placed there randomly during setup. Players can then play further conservation projects uh, to get more chances of, of increasing their conservation value. Remember, you want that to go past your appeal value. And unlocking these um, these cubes here when you place them there, because that unlocks those icons that will give you different benefits during the game. Uh, benefits that may apply instantaneously, pew, the lightning bolt, and also during the income phase, which is when we take our lovely coffee break. 
So that's for the association, which is basically its own worker placement minigame within the game. Sponsors. Oh, also, ah, there was another thing. Yeah, the donation is part of the upgraded, part of the upgraded association action. Then you can place a queue from your supply there, spend the corresponding amount of money to increase your conservation value as you place a cube that fills up that space so the donation action becomes increasingly more expensive. Sponsors, play sponsor cards and or, or collect money, collect money but also that moves the break marker on that track fast and that's why this action is usually taken later on in the round when people don't have a lot that is left to do. Uh, collect cards uh, that also increases the break and then you can draw cards uh, from the deck or you snap them which means it which really simply means is when you take them from the center as you can see can be a bit expensive when you draw from the deck is usually a mix of drawing and possibly you may have to discard depending on the strength of the action and it becomes stronger and easier to snap uh, cards within the reputation um, range um, for uh, whatchamacallit if you uh, have upgraded your card action. So this is the general idea. Honestly it's not too bad. It only took me 16 minutes to give you a general sense. Um, it takes a little longer to explain the game but then of course it takes a lot longer for players who have just been flooded with all this information. It takes them a lot longer to actually grok the game and figure out where to go and what to do if I need to build. I need that. Where do I get that? Oh, I need that thing there and so on and so forth. So, not, uh, not a light game that's for sure but I hope I gave you at least a general sense of how you play Arc Nova. And now on to the conclusions. So this is what happened. Uh, I had game night with three friends uh, coming over. One had read the rule book, I had read the rule book, and two were just pure uh, lambs to the slaughter. So we taught them the game and then we played the game. And these two friends, as is normal the first time that you play a game with this complexity, struggle both with the rules and with the strategy. Bob and I, who had read the rules, only struggle with the strategy. Wait, what do I need to do to do that thing and that that thing and what am I achieving by doing all these things? I'm taking this token and I, it took me three turns to collect this token, which maybe I don't need so much after all. So after I'd say two and a half hours of, of playing the game with a lot of downtime because there's absolutely nothing for you to do uh, during the player's turns uh, unless you think about you're thinking about your your strategy. Uh, we just called it. Uh, we wasn't clear whether or not we were close to finishing the game. People were tired. And so we played an incomplete uh, learning game. But then the game was on the table. I was like, well, I'll, I'll guess I'll, I'll play solo. I don't, I'm not a big fan of learning AIs, but I, wouldn't, I wanted to give us a try to the game. To my utter surprise, turns out that to play the game solo, you don't need an AI. You don't really need to learn anything new, pretty much. Uh, there is like a very small section of solo rules. So there is yeah, a display which you use to keep track of turns. That's the idea. The solo game is exactly the same as the multiplayer. You play for a certain number of turns and you see if you're able to score any point by having your conservation marker go past the appeal marker. The difficulty level is based uh, on how many appeal points you start with which may be zero if you really like pain that way. Uh, I, I started with the easy mode and I love the solo game. I love the solo game. I was like, what? That's exactly like when I was playing multiplayer, but it, as it should be because there is absolutely no downtime. I'm playing a turn, then I'm playing another turn, then I'm playing another turn, then it's me again, then I'm playing my turn. Then I'm really, okay, I take that card, I'm building that thing, I collect that money, which I spend, now I play the animal etc, etc, etc. But let, let that sink in for a moment. Uh, the presence of other people is so irrelevant to the experience of play that the solo game is exactly the same. To me, that's a stunning acknowledgement that the, the multiplayer is a solo game. That what other players do 
as basically irrelevant to what you're gonna do to the point that playing solo and play multiplayer is exactly the same. So multiplayer game to me here is almost irrelevant because it really, you're playing solo, but just you have to wait for longer. Uh, once I discovered that, well, first let me tell you, I fell in love with the game when I was playing it solo. I think this is, is a fantastic, is a fantastic solo Euro game. It's excellent. Uh, and I don't think I'll ever play it with other people again. Even a friend says like, hey, uh, look, I know the game, I can play very quickly, why don't we leave the two of us? I'm probably going to say no, but you can borrow it because if your opponent knows the game well and, and can play so quickly, well, that mitigates the downtime. But there's still no advantage rather than the presence of another player, I guess, randomizes the end of the game as they may be able to end the game uh, more quickly, less quickly. But other than that, the AI, or lack thereof, shows you that what they do, the fact that they're sitting there and playing the game at the same time as you, um, is completely irrelevant. As a solo game, it is great, and I really feel that this is how it shines. You can play a game in an hour or less, uh, and there are games in which I was playing solo, and I was like, I realized, hey, I'm not gonna make it. They're just, my icons are too scattered, I don't have the synergies, I can't meet the conservation requirements, I'll call it early. But then, I would say in an hour, you get a full game in which you get a narrow victory or a narrow defeat. And, and it's fun and challenging. I love the solo experience, which is the same as the multiplayer without the downtime. I don't see any advantage of playing it with other people. As a solo, well, then your mind is getting that nice, fun brain burn from all of these decisions that are flooding uh, your, 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 your mind. You're thinking of all these possible things. There is a fantastic sense of... Of, of scarcity, things are just, you can never, not ever do all that you want to do, then you're selecting what to do, and every decision feels so relevant, every decision feels so impactful, I'm committing to a certain enclosure, and then to a certain animal, that will give me those icons, and that will give me that other stuff, that engine building that you have in good Euro games uh, really works well here, really pays off, as you are both collecting resources and collecting the tools to help you score according to those things, and you can invest, and you have to invest a little bit in a little bit of everything. Uh, you have a very appealing, a very appealing zoo, but you don't have conservation, then that's not going to be good. Uh, you have a lot of conservation, but not enough appeal. But to do those things, you need the sponsors, and you need you need everything, and you don't have the chances, you don't have the tools, you don't have the time to do everything, which is, of course, excellent. It's exactly what makes a game compelling to me. So definitely there's going to be a learning curve, even if you plan to play it only solo, uh, there's a learning curve, but it pays off. I would say I'm happy that I went through that session of teaching the game to other people, answering their, their questions, working through, wait, how does this exactly work? Because then it really facilitated my experience with playing the game solo. Often it's the other way around. We play a game solo so we can teach it to other people. It worked the opposite here for me. But the final result that I was playing the game solo in a way that I think really is the way it was designed at its core, uh, and it works so well. Then the actions are quick, I select my action, um, I love the chaining things, like, well, this action is good enough now, but most importantly, it powers up this other action, and then I add this other thing, or like, ah, taking this action is not super good right now, but it places my other cards in an order that then I can exploit. That mini game of managing your the, the cycling, the, 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 the variable power of your cards, the mini game on the board, the hand management, the tile laying game. So you have these mini games, so it, again, of course, is demanding to learn, but they work together almost miraculously, almost seamlessly when when you finally grok the game. So I'm extremely pleased with this game. The production is really, really good. The, the, the board looks great. 
I don't particularly love shuffling a deck, of course, this thick, but that's that's the way it is. That's the one minus that I have there. Uh, but I love the gameplay that I discovered when I finally played the game Solitaire. Then it's quick. Yes, it is quick. It is smooth. It flows so well. And it results in a space of decisions and interesting interesting decisions, the likes of which uh, I don't often see in, in Euro games. This is an excellent solitaire game. Uh, if you're not planning to play solitaire, well, I don't know. Again, you really hate playing games solitaire, so you want to play with other people also, sure. But again, I don't see any advantage. I know I'm not going to play multiplayer again because it's exactly the same game as solo with more downtime. But as a solo game, this is a fantastic one. I love it. It's challenging. It is fun. It is, yes, demanding to learn, but oh, so rewarding, so rewarding when you finally get it. I definitely love playing Ark Nova solo.